And at 10, Freddy. The relationship with Freddy here is a very interesting but weird one, I'm going to have to admit. It's like the two characters, Gregory and Freddy, are brothers. But my concern is why Gregory is so confident that he wouldn't get caught, that he would crawl inside of Freddy. Like all the other animatronics have been programmed to track you down, so why would he think that Freddy was any different? Especially after parts in service, when Freddy could have easily been restored to factory settings or something like that. His trust in Freddy was so odd that I was certain we'd get betrayed by him at the end of the game, or in one of the endings, but no. Every ending ends with Freddy staying by our side, even if it destroys him in the process. Gregory's trust and relationship with Glamrock Freddy is certainly a weird thing. And at 9, Homeless. The fact that Gregory also appears to be homeless is an entirely other thing. Like normally, if a child is homeless or an orphan, he'd be taken to an orphanage or to family to stay with. Yet somehow, this child has been able to avoid every form of law enforcement that's noticed him, or just avoided detection altogether, and that seems fairly insane to me. However, these are also the police that couldn't find the original five missing children's bodies after the animatronics were literally leaking blood, but that's aside the point. You'd think that this kid, after being locked in a pizza place overnight, would be willing to go to an orphanage to make sure that he was safe, because, you know, a psychopathic killer bunny was after you for six hours. But no. <laughs> My question is why did Gregory just go and like why did he hide in the pizza plex if he was really homeless like I'm sure that Freddy could have kept him in his green room and just like let him sleep or hell let Gregory sleep in his stomach while Freddy made sure that he was like getting to the recharge stations every hour like he needed to normally it just seems like it could have been avoided and it should have been avoided and it ate height now, Gregory's height compared to his age has always been something that's bothered me. So, to really calculate how tall Gregory is, I did a good old pixel measurement off the Funko statue of Gregory and Freddy. Now, assuming that Glamrock Freddy's height is the same as Rockstar Freddy, which ends up being around 6.1 feet, which is, let's be honest, going to give Gregory the best chance here, that means that Freddy's 570 pixels in this instance, for how I was doing it, ends up being 6.1 feet. The opening that Gregory hides in when being generous with my counting was 100 and 18 pixels tall, averaging out to around 8.3 pixels per inch. 118 pixels, which keep in mind was generous, ends up equaling to about 14.21 inches or 1.18 feet. Going on various forms about children's car seats, I learned that the torso length of kids, while greatly varying, does end up being larger than 14.21 inches on average. Even a four-year-old ended up having a torso of 15 inches. So Gregory ends up fitting his entire torso into the cavity with room to spare. I double-checked the measurements because that just seemed off to me, and it still worked out properly. So Gregory's torso, is smaller than that of a four-year-old. So like, what the f is going on here? And it's seven, memory loss? For a kid who was more than willing to climb inside Freddy and also get decked out in Fazbear Entertainment merch, he sure seems to forget quite a bit about these animatronics. Gregory, while stumbling on his own name, may not show obvious signs of memory loss. When he gets trapped in a security office when she goes outside the door, his only way out is to make a pizza using a robot. Now he asks Freddy why he needs to or even should do this, and Freddy's response is because Chica loves pizza. Of course Chica loves pizza! That's been her brand since the start for like 40 years in this series. There have been me about how much Chica loves pizza. They made a whole Mazer size center because Chica loved pizza so much and they wanted to explain how she lost her weight. Gregory even catches her eating garbage and pizza for God's sake. And he doesn't know that she loves pizza? How? How does he not know that when wearing both a Fazbear Entertainment shirt and shoes? Yeah, seems a little sus if you ask me. Gregory definitely should be venting. And it's sixth therapy. Gregory might have actually been going to therapy, but we're not certain if this was actually the case. This is possible though thanks to the 16 retro CDs that can be found towards the end of the game. That can be played with a CD player in the hidden sister location room. The retro CDs require Roxanne's eye upgrade on Glamrock Freddy. Out of all 16 tapes though, half of them are for a patient labeled with the numbers 4-6. The other eight are for Vanessa, however these are marked with the number 7-1. 
Patient 46 is very odd, never responding with words and never even being named. Some assume that this could be Vanny, however if that were the case, they wouldn't have another designation for her since they just think it's Vanessa. The issue also arises that they're being talked to as if they were a child, which would indicate Gregory. But only people associated with the company end up being evaluated by the shrink. So how could Gregory be associated with this company, but not have a guest profile and be wiped from the hard drive? Client 46 also had their last three therapists disappear, with one of them turning up dead, and they don't really seem to mind, which lines up with Gregory being willing to kill Vanny in the phaser blast ending. So, maybe it is him. Halfway through into number five, extreme measures. Speaking of which, Gregory being willing to kill Vanny at the end of the phaser blast room is pretty messed up. Especially if this kid is meant to be like 10 or 11, which is what everyone seems to believe. This kid is easily able to destroy all three animatronics without a moment's hesitation and then use their upgrades on Freddy. He is willing to kill Vanny, like I said, despite actually seemingly knowing her, like we see in the best ending, and he burns Burn Trap multiple times in an attempt to stop him from taking control over Freddy. So. What the absolute living hell is this kid doing and how is he so nonchalant about this whole thing? This guy kills Vanny and then only gets emotional when he has to go and talk to a destroyed Freddy. Like dude, Vanny is literally bleeding out mere feet from you. Couldn't you have just said like, stop Vanny or restrain Vanny, not freaking disassemble Vanny? I get that she said that about Freddy and it's fresh on your mind, but dude, you're not panicking about literally anything else. So just to say something that doesn't involve a human dying for God's sakes, especially if you know her. In it for Vanessa. Like I just mentioned, his relationship with Vanessa also seemingly makes no sense. We're willing to kill her in one ending, she kills us in another, but if we free her from William's control, she ends up taking us out for ice cream, and we sit on a hill with Glamrock Freddy's head, no big deal. Like this lady just spent six hours trying to kill you, bro. You think that it would be a little more difficult to just go out and chill with her, even if she did offer you ice cream. Like, would you get into her unmarked van if she offered you ice cream? I doubt it. So like, why do you think this is a good idea? It seems like they're related, or at least know each other somehow, but no connection prior to this has ever been established. So like, what the absolute living hell? And Gregory isn't mentioned in Vanessa's therapy sessions and vice versa. Vanessa isn't mentioned to Gregory in those sessions, if those sessions are for Gregory at least. But even if they are Gregory's, who made him associated with the company? It could have been Vanessa, but wouldn't they have ended up mentioning her odd behavior or asked Vanessa about her younger brother or foster brother or whatever the hell he is? Exactly. This is King 100% certified weird. Getting close to the end in number three, potential robot. The possibility that Gregory is a robot is still a thing at the time of recording. So let's talk about the random bits that make Gregory seem more like an animatronic than a human. There's the fact that he's literally smaller than a four year old, however is able to speak full sentences and do literally everything else he does in this game, which seems like he's a rogue robot that's been active for a long time. He can also get all CRT glitchy eyed whenever Vanny's around, similar to an effect where you'd hold up a magnet to like a, one of those old TVs, it's kind of like that. There's Freddy's shock as to how he sees Gregory after getting Roxy's eyes, and there's also the fact that literally nothing else makes sense about him unless he is a robot. It explains why he's homeless, it explains why he's willing to kill, cause you know, no moral code, why Vanny would be willing to bring him to William if he's supposed to be crying child but as a robot, it explains why Afton takes over Freddy and not Gregory if he's still meant to be crying child, and basically makes this whole game make a lot more sense. So is he a robot? Currently unknown, but it is certainly a possibility. And ultimately, in a number two, can drive. Gregory being able to drive the Fazbear van in the van ending is probably one of the biggest WTF moments in this entire game for me. Like this kid is able to hide in baby strollers and can fit his torso into a 14 inch hole, but is also able to press the pedals on a van, not even a car, but like an actual van. How the living hell is that possible? I guess maybe perhaps he put like a brick on the gas pedal, but that seems like it would be an even worse idea and not very effective, depending on the brick. Like, how the living hell was Gregory able to drive that truck or even know how to drive it? And how did Freddy allow that? Or like all his, all his safety protocols off or something? Like, what the absolute living hell do we think is going on here? Cause I have no clue. Gregory driving a car is nine out of 10 on the weird scale and honestly, in my opinion, King 100% certified weird. Like who the f 
thought that this made sense, and then didn't explain to us how he's driving the van. God damn it. And finally, in a number one, knowledge. You know what I value more than the cars in my garage? Knowledge. Finally, the knowledge that this kid has exceeds even some of my own. This kid is the size of a four-year-old, can fit inside Freddy, baby strollers, and various other small areas around the Pizzaplex. He's too small to go driving in one of the go-karts alone, but he knows how to restart generators, operate a trash compactor, start and drive a car, as well as identify a car battery, connect the jumper cables on a car battery properly, and then use those to fix Freddy's whole recharge every hour issue. How the living hell does that make any sense? And how do they solve that issue in the true ending? Because Freddy is still going to need to recharge every hour, and they don't have a van this time around. So how do Freddy and Gregory make it to the hill without Freddy needing to recharge? Or how do they solve that issue? This kid knows more words than I do, but somehow is still the size of a four-year-old. Maybe. Maybe even smaller. No, it just it makes absolutely no sense. And this kid's weird superpower is what makes this game so confusing. It really only makes sense if he's a robot that was supposed to mimic a toddler who's been operational for decades and has been learning this whole time. That's the only way that this makes any sense to me. In a 10, breaking and entering. This kid is known for breaking into the Pizzaplex, as we learn through the therapy CDs that you can find at the end of the game. The ones revolving around Client 46 are certainly intended to be Gregory, and every time he breaks in, he ends up getting caught on camera or by technicians or someone working there. Enough times to actually mention it to his therapist, who then brings it up with Gregory. Breaking and entering would actually be what he'd be charged with if he wasn't under 20 12 and seemingly could actually get caught, but despite a few witnesses, the cameras never get a solid shot of him. Probably due to Vanny, since the camera was distorted when talking to something with bunny ears. I originally thought this distortion could be Gregory being a robot, however it was pointed out to me in the comments of the Gregory isn't therapy theory video that the distortion was most likely due to Vanny. And at 9, trespassing. Okay, so while yes he does break into the Pizzaplex, he also ends up trespassing the entirety of the game, that's literally the premise behind this game. Gregory is trapped in there after it's closed, which instantly makes it trespassing. Like how you aren't supposed to stay overnight in a Walmart, like people used to claim they were doing in YouTube videos. Yeah, well, if they actually did that, it's trespassing. And so with this, he gets told to leave multiple times and the security guard is at least seemingly trying to help him get home. At least, legally speaking, she is. So, assuming he ends up getting caught, he could be charged. Although, with everything else that happened, I don't think they'd actually end up charging him. But he even goes into restricted sections of the Pizzaplex, like where we find the true ending and where we go after we crush Chica. So yeah, he's definitely trespassing in the entirety of this game. Ironically, he only ends up getting killed when he stops. And it ain't steals security badges. Not only is this just like a stealthy kid, he's also a thief. This guy steals so many things from the Pizzaplex, like not to mention all the little gift boxes you can find around. He also steals all the security badges that end up getting him level seven clearance as a six year old or however old he is. It's really unclear because he can't can't ride the go-karts alone, and he can fit in Freddy's chest cavity, but can also speak full sentences with proper grammar and stuff. No idea how old he is, but he's still able to gain level 7 clearance. That's ridiculous. I don't think I would technically count it as impersonating a security guard, because he's not really doing that, but that is absolutely stealing. And this isn't the only time, too. He steals more than just some prizes and some badges. It gets even worse than, than just stealing. Like, worse in both the vein of the severity of the crime, and in general the severity of the stealing. And at 7, steals merch. While yes, Gregory does steal multiple items while we play the game, he's also stolen some stuff prior to the game starting. If you pay attention to his character model and some of the comic panels and various endings, we can see that his shirt and shoes are at the very least are Freddy Fazbear themed. They have Freddy's head on them, and considering how this kid has no home, sleeping in a cardboard box at the end of the worst ending, I doubt he could really afford to properly purchase Fazbear Entertainment clothing. And considering how he's breaking in, I feel like it's needless to say that he stole the clothes off of Fazbear's back. This is why they have to keep reopening, otherwise they'd be so bankrupt the current CEO, whoever they are, would end up having to actually also live in a cardboard box. This kid alone is the reason they can never fully close and have to keep reopening. Like, honestly, that's probably the only way them reopening makes sense, aside from them being money-hungry 
who don't care about how many children actually perish for them to live their comfortable lives. And it's six, resisting arrest. So while most reports of resisting arrests are exaggerated, when it comes to Gregory, I don't really think it is. This man literally escapes the lost and found room while the police are supposed to be on their way. Yes, Vanny is coming to kill us, but if you think about it, you can escape even before we are aware of Vanny's presence, meaning that we are actively resisting arrest, or as close to arrest as it can be. Technically, if we look at it in a certain way, it could be considered a citizen's arrest. And I know that it's not how it would work in real life, okay? So cool your jets before you comment. Wait, wait you already did comment? You were complaining about an earlier number? Wow. Who cares if it's not how things would work in the real world? This is a game! Afton wouldn't work like he does in the real world. Possession doesn't exist in the real world. So just like, cool it, okay? Gregory is resisting arrest for breaking out of the lost and found room, and he also stole a screwdriver that he uses to do it. Plus, removing vent covers could also be considered. Halfway through into number five, vandalism. Not only does Gregory damage multiple vents and vent covers throughout the game, but the main objective of the game is actually a crime. Yeah, that's right, you heard me. Us upgrading Freddy using the parts of other animatronics that we acquire through destructive means is indeed vandalism. Or it could be considered destruction of property instead, if you wanted to add, I guess, maybe more of a specific route or in that direction. Either way, destroying these animatronics, despite them trying to get to us, is a crime. Technically, we don't know what happens when we get caught by an animatronic. Our screen cuts out before we see any real harm come to us. So we are assuming that we get killed, which is the likely scenario, but it's still merely an assumption. Plus, they're animatronics, so we can't really claim self-defense. I mean, like, I guess it would depend on the jury and the judge as to whether you could claim self-defense or not. Like, yeah, you feared for your life, but does that really call for hitting Roxy with a go-kart, crushing Chica in a trash compactor, and then smashing Monty with a giant bucket? Or could you just have, like, hid inside Freddy's green room the whole time? They could also even use the fact that Freddy was good and helping you as a reason as to why the rest wouldn't have hurt you. So, yeah. In it for fraud. Technically speaking, Gregory also commits fraud by getting into the Pizza Flex and the daycare center. The definition of fraud is, quote, wrongful or criminal deception intended to result in financial or personal gain. And he was personally gaining from using that Mr. Hippo magnet on the ticket machine and getting into the Pizza Plex for free. So within the first 25 minutes of the game, we're already committing multiple crimes. And if the magnet messed with the machine even more, then we end up committing at least three different crimes within the first 25 minutes. Theft, fraud, and vandalism if the machine gets messed up, not to mention the whole trespassing and breaking and entering thing. Yeah, Gregory has quite the rap sheet after this game. Even within the first hour of the game, this guy has some serious issues. Maybe this kid isn't Afton, considering how like nonchalant he is with committing so many freaking crimes. Getting close to the end in number three, grand larceny. <laughs> Stealing a boatload of trinkets, it's fine. Assuming that we gave a pass to Gregory, okay? He still commits grand larceny, which in the US is typically seen as stealing anything with a combined value of $400 or more, or something that would cost over $400 to replace in a reasonable amount of time. If we ignore the 87 collectible prize boxes found throughout the game, which would easily equal over $400, he still steals Freddy at the end of the game! In multiple endings, Freddy and Gregory leave without a care in the world, including the canon ending. And before you say, Connor, I'm calling BS, Freddy chose to leave with Gregory in those endings. Freddy is a f robot! <laughs> He is an animatronic. He cannot physically make that choice. He is property of Fazbear Entertainment. He is not a living being. He has no rights. He is an object in the most literal sense of the word, which makes me think that we need to start advocating for animatronic rights now. <laughs> I mean, Freddy didn't consent to Gregory climbing inside him the first time, so Gregory, in theory, should be getting charged with a whole lot more than just grand larceny for stealing Freddy. And if you tell me that you don't think replacing Freddy in a reasonable amount of time would cost more than $400, I need you to leave this video. Thank you. He would probably be the most expensive one to replace, I'm sure. And ultimately, in a number two, hacked animatronics. Assuming Gregory is client 46, which is kind of required for this list, he's also guilty of hacking the animatronics, as we learned multiple times throughout his sessions. The only issue I have now is why is he hacking the animatronics? Like, he definitely had a purpose, since to quote Disc 16, what I understand is that the glitch stopped being a glitch and turned into an intentional set of subroutines that were aimed at creating the same thing the glitch created. 
those subroutines seem to have come from you. Can you explain that? And I think that I can explain that. There's like a good and an evil motive for this hack, depending on which one they want to be canon. The evil motive would be that Gregory was just working with William and Vanessa, so he hacked the animatronics and made sure the glitch he caused instilled itself into the robots so that his work couldn't be undone to end up distracting all the employees from what's really going on in the pizza place. The good intention, which is the one I think would push the story further ahead and is probably the more likely one, would be that he lied about his family to the therapist so that he could keep seeing them and he would have more time in the company building so that he could hack the animatronics, causing them to malfunction in an effort to get the company or the uh, FNAF AR special delivery project shut down. Hence why the glitch ended up being a closed loop where it was replicating itself over and over so it couldn't be deleted. And finally, in at number one, kills Vanny. In the phaser blast ending, the one where you push the button instead of playing Princess Quest 3, Gregory actually orders the robots to disassemble Vanny. Gregory being willing to kill Vanny is so messed up, especially if this kid is meant to be like 10 or 11, which is what everyone seems to believe, even though I think he's 6. Even then, that's still pretty screwed, but you could argue that he doesn't know any better. But clearly, Gregory does know better. This kid is easily able to destroy all three animatronics without a moment's hesitation, and then use their upgrades on Freddy. He is willing to kill Vanny, like I said, despite actually seemingly knowing her, like we see in the best ending, and he burns Burn Trap multiple times in an attempt to stop him from taking control over Freddy. So what the living hell is this kid doing and how is he so nonchalant about this whole thing? This guy kills Vanny and then only gets emotional and starts crying when he has to talk to a destroyed Freddy. Like dude, Vanny is literally gushing blood next to you. Like right there. Couldn't you have just said like stop or restrain? Not freaking disassemble? Like I get that she said that about Freddy and that it's up in your noggin, okay? But dude, you're not panicking about literally everything else that I've mentioned on this list. Gregory commits murder in one of the endings to this game. What the hell is this kid? Now, based on the points I made last time, there are a few things that we need to go over. Firstly, the breaking and entering does not apply in the actual game, but can come into play later on. He is 100% trespassing though, despite being locked inside. He actively hid inside of Freddy, like in his stomach, instead of leaving the pizza plex, which would make this trespassing. Every time I mention stealing, like in the merch, the security badges, even Freddy. There's no arguing that. He does in fact steal those. The main argument against these is that, well, he needs to do this to survive, which is blatantly not true. Okay. Freddy informs Gregory that the doors will reopen at 6 a.m. All Gregory needs to do at that point is just stay in Freddy's green room or the area behind it until 6. Nothing else was necessary in order for him to survive. The only problems occur when Gregory tries to get out sooner. He causes his own problems. Vanny only ends up knowing Gregory is in the Lost and Found because she put him there as Vanessa. So, with that logic in mind, Vanny would not have known that Gregory was in Freddy or Freddy's green room. He says that himself. And Vanessa does not check inside Freddy when you approach while piloting him. So as far as the argument that he needed to do this to survive, no he didn't. Unless he ends up making the problems himself, which would completely destroy his case. So, glad we got that settled. One of the other points of contention was really everything else he did was in self-defense. He had to destroy the animatronics. He had to kill Vanny in the phaser blast ending, otherwise they would have killed him. But, while self-defense does sometimes justify killing in order to protect yourself or your loved ones, this is, this is typically used for human-on-human -human interaction. Human-on-robot interactions wouldn't necessarily fall under self-defense. The animatronics would have to be proven that they didn't intend to harm Gregory, and this could be done using code analysis and camera footage. However, we know that the animatronics were hacked, and whoever Client 46 is did the hacking. Now, if Client 46 is Gregory, which in the context of this world, they would know, and the evidence seems to actually point to, the fact that the animatronics were after him could be seen as his fault since he actually disturbed their original programming. This is also where the footage of him in the Pizzaplex would have come out, particularly the image where he was talking to someone with rabbit ears, thus showing the jury that Gregory and Vanny had a personal relationship, further hurting his case. Gregory by no means had to destroy the animatronics. He chose to do it. Freddy even asks him not to. Gregory didn't do it because he had to, he did it because he wanted revenge. He even says it himself, quote, they get what they deserve. He was 
destroying them for revenge and to get the parts for Freddy. Not so that they wouldn't hurt him. Since after all, they can still come and kill him after he destroys them. So he does destroy property because he wanted the animatronics to suffer, not because he had to in order to be safe again. Again, could have just hidden Freddy's room or somewhere else. People are also saying that he's homeless, so he has to steal. Firstly, homeless or not, it's still illegal to steal. And secondly, I don't think that he needs Roxy balloons, action figures, and stuffed characters in order to survive another day. I'm not saying that he shouldn't keep himself alive, I'm just saying that he's what he's doing is illegal, which is true, no matter who you are. And anything I included in those numbers was not a story item, and instead the extra items that you do not need in order to beat the game. And you didn't need to steal Freddy at all. There is no justification for him riding off with Freddy other than the fact that they're friends. But then again, it's grand larceny and illegal. One commenter decided to try and provide legal defense for Gregory in a lighthearted manner because that was also the point of the video. So I'd like to reply to Jason Ross's defense for the theft of security badges. Quote from his comment, while this is technically a crime, I think he could make a strong case with any halfway decent lawyer that he did so out of necessity. He stole stuff to help further his attempts to escape unlawful confinement and other crimes committed against him. Stealing those items he stole was necessary to save himself. He would never have survived the night if he didn't steal. First of all, you just outright admitted that it was a crime, which an actual attorney would have torn to shreds. Secondly, like I've been saying, he could have been hiding the entire time, okay? He would have survived if he had just hid until 6. He doesn't escape any sooner than 6 a.m. You progressing throughout the game just makes the time go to 6. He never escapes sooner. He did not have to steal the security badges. Unlawful confinement, as you said, is described as whoever wrongfully restrains a person as to prevent that person to move beyond a certain restricted limit is said to have committed the offense of wrongful confinement. However, nobody restrains Gregory, literally, as well. Like, they don't actually like time to anything. He gets himself locked in the pizza plex. Nobody locked him in there intentionally. The doors close automatically at midnight, and he had plenty of time to leave, but didn't, and he chose to climb inside Freddy. Which also ruins your argument against trespassing, which was also wrongful confinement. And for all intents and purposes, in the eyes of the law and any outsiders, Vanessa was actively trying to help him. There are recordings of her claiming to have called the police, which would have been verified certainly, but even if she had called them and claimed something else, the record of her calling 911 would be there. Most of Ross's case relies on unlawful confinement, however, staying in somewhere and then wanting to leave does not constitute unlawful confinement. And to the public, Vanessa was trying to help get him home, but he was avoiding her. We know that she was trying to kill him, but the public doesn't. Now for the biggest issue that everyone seemed to have with this list. The one that I'm sure y'all clicked on this video for. The claim that killing Vanny was murder and not self-defense. And this claim is really the reason I wanted to make this video, because I can't reply to every single comment that was referring to this, okay? Self-defense can be a defense to an assault, battery, and criminal homicide because it always involves the use of force. Most states have special requirements when the defendant uses deadly force in self-defense. Deadly force is defined as any force that could potentially kill. An individual does not have to actually die for the force to be considered deadly. Examples of deadly force are the use of a knife, gun, vehicle or even bare hands when there is a disparity in size between the two individuals. Or, in this case, the use of animatronic robots to kill Vanny, as Gregory does in the Phaser Blast ending. Which would also set a precedent for robots being counted as deadly force. To successfully claim self-defense, a defendant must prove four elements. First, with exceptions, the defendant must prove that he or she was confronted with an unprovoked attack. Second, the defendant must prove that the threat of injury or death was imminent. Third, the defendant defendant must prove that the degree of force used in self-defense was objectively reasonable under the circumstances. And fourth, the defendant must prove that he or she had an objectively reasonable fear that he or she was going to be injured or killed unless he or she used self-defense. The Model Penal Code defines self-defense as justifiable when the actor believes that such force is immediately necessary for the purposes of protecting himself against the use of unlawful force by such other person on the present occasion. Okay, so I'm willing to admit that the attack was certainly unprovoked. Vanny did not need to come after him in order to get him out of the pizza plex. However, that second issue, the proof of threat of injury or death was imminent, is where things get complicated. At no point in the game does Vanny directly threaten Gregory with any words. Her voice lines include, see you soon, disassemble Freddy, there you are, are you having fun yet, laughter, and let's have some fun. While menacing, none of these involve a direct threat. At no point in the game does she 
brandish a knife or even send the security bots after Gregory to disassemble him. She only sends the three main ones to collect him, who also make no appearance in this ending, therefore do not count. Yes, when she catches us, we get a game over screen, but that's just us losing the game. That isn't necessarily us being killed. Us thinking that we get killed is simply an assumption because we don't see what happens next. However, in this case, since we made it to the end, Gregory had never been caught by Vanny. While yes, she does end up destroying an animatronic, it was just an animatronic. That's not really a threat on Gregory. Now, let's skip point number three for a minute and then move on to point number four. That the defendant must prove that he or she had an objectively reasonable fear that he or she was going to be injured or killed unless they used self-defense. While yes, Gregory is a child or seemingly a child who would have a more extreme view of the world, he literally spent six hours running and hiding from Vanny, where he ended up surviving. In fact, he was right at the pizza plex door to leave. But in Instead, instead of leaving, he chose to go after Vanny, thus turning this act of possible self-defense into a possible act of vigilantism, or even turning Gregory into the aggressor. He and Freddy went to confront Vanny. He says himself, maybe that they can catch her in her room at Phaser Blast. Gregory could have left and survived, but chose not to, meaning that he cannot claim self-defense in an altercation that he created. And now for the final point. The defendant must prove that the degree of force used in self-defense was objectively reasonable under the circumstance. Now, being a child, there is a leeway as to what would, like, what he would deem reasonable force, but in this case, it is absolutely not reasonable force. We see how destroyed Freddy is after he gets disassembled, okay? His chest and torso are gaping open. He had his insides ripped out. And then, he even ends up, like, dying in an animatronic sense, even though his his body and his head have been shown to work separately. And then, Gregory orders the same thing done to Vanny, a human who would be alive as the animatronics ripped her ribs and intestines from her body. Does that sound reasonable to you? Because killing in self-defense is easiest to claim when the death you cause is quick or painless. But Vanny suffered and suffered hard. Even criminals on death row do not get this treatment. A serial killer with more kills than Vanny would just get the simple two dose lethal injection, where the first dose actually is intended to dull the pain of the second dose. Under absolutely no circumstances would Vanny being torn apart so badly that the comic panels won't even show it be considered the proper amount of force, especially when he could have said anything to stop or break or even kill. He could have just said kill. This is absolutely over the top, especially given that Gregory seems to have known her if he is indeed Client 46, which is also hinted at during the Princess Quest ending, but since that's a different ending, that doesn't really count here. Which, if he was Client 46, that would have appeared in court. So what kind of charges in juvenile time is Gregory facing because of this? Well, if Gregory had Mac Murdock as a lawyer, let's say, or as someone who's also a really good lawyer, they could possibly argue that this would rather be manslaughter than murder. However, Gregory knows what disassemble means, so an argument that this was an accident would be very tough to pull off. But looking at the minimum sentence, there are three possible outcomes for how he'd be treated. One, the child is so young or mentally incompetent to not understand what they've done and are excused for criminal and civil liability from their actions. Not the case for Gregory, who knew full well what was going on the entire time throughout this game. Two, the child is old enough to understand what they have done, but not old enough or lacking in evidence of sufficient premeditation to charge them as an adult, so they are charged and tried as juveniles, which could be the case for Gregory and is the most likely outcome. And then three, the child is old enough to understand what they have done and there is evidence of planning and premeditation such that they can be deemed to have acted as an adult might, and they are charged as an adult, with the exception that minors may not be sentenced to death. Now, this could be the way that the courts decided to go, since after all, Gregory did intend on confronting Vanny, since he could have left the pizza plex, but instead went after her. If he is Client 46 as well, the images of him breaking into the Pizza Plex before could be interpreted as premeditation, especially if he was investigating the Pizza Plex because of Vanny. The state could also argue that his intention was always to kill her. So, with these rules in mind, we will look at a minimum and maximum sentence. The minimum would be a manslaughter charge. However, unlike murder, manslaughter does not carry an automatic sentence of life imprisonment. It remains, however, an opinion for the court. But looking at the situation, things wouldn't look too good for Gregory. A nine-year sentence, which is not 
uncommon would allow the offender to be paroled after serving three years of their sentence. If a firearm is involved in the offense though, a minimum sentence of four years is required. And while the weapon was not a firearm, it could be argued that since she was a distance from him that it could also be considered similar. So at least Gregory would be looking at three to nine years for manslaughter. If he was charged with murder, however, he would absolutely be tried as an adult. And since this is the worst case, we'll go with first degree murder since the court could consider this planned and deliberate. Those convicted of first degree murder all received the same sentence. Life imprisonment with parole eligibility after 25 years. A 20 year old convicted of first degree murder will be eligible for parole at the age of 45. And if they behave themselves, then they're likely to receive parole. But considering Gregory's personality and your comments on that top 10 video, I, I doubt that he'd like admit responsibility, show remorse. He doesn't seem like that kind of person. Although after 25 years, he may start looking at things differently. With new eyes, if you will. This is also if he ends up actually aging because he's a real human and not a robot like we're all thinking. And like if he doesn't age, a whole new investigation is gonna happen. So uh, let's, let's not get into that.